Hey guys, Simcoder here, and today we are going to do something that's quite different and, in my opinion, really fun to do if you are starting out with React Native or you want to do something that's a bit different. We are going to try and implement Flappy Bird. We are not going to do everything, however, we are going to try and implement the basic physics engine that um, exists within Flappy Bird or emulate it using a package that we'll see later on and uh, how we can do all of the basic stuff around Flappy Bird. Obviously, this isn't the best way to do it. Obviously, if you want to do a game, Unity would be probably the best way to go at the moment. However, uh, it is possible to do with React Native, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it. So yeah, let's do it. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing that we have to do is to do the basic setup of uh, our project. And for this, we are not going to use React Native CLI, we are going to use Expo. Expo is um, a tool that allows you to easily deploy React Native apps without having to have all of that boilerplate code that usually comes with React Native. Uh, it has some restrictions. However, for this type of project, uh, it is perfect. And remember, you are writing the code just as you do uh, for any React Native project. So uh, it is basically the same thing, especially for this project. There isn't any difference between using both of them. And if you want to get out of the Expo project at any time, you can by running uh, Expo eject on your root folder of the project. So yeah, it is basically the same. So let's go into uh, Google Chrome and see what we need to do. Well, first of all, we need to install Expo. For this, you must run npm install uh, minus minus global Expo CLI, um, which will, uh, you obviously need a node in order to run this command. So make sure you have a node installed on your machine for this. Uh, so it is really, really simple. After that, we are going to run this command right here. So let's come right into VS Code and type in expo init flappy birds clone and i'm going to underscore this as i prefer it and uh, for this we are going to go with the blank app uh, however if you want to run it in typescript for example then you can choose any other if you choose the bare flow uh, bare workflow it will create a React Native project just like React Native CLI does. But because we want the Expo project, we must go with the managed workflow. So let's choose blank and give it some time for every dependency to get installed. Okay, so now that the, the setup has finished in the in Expo side, we can simply change directory into uh, the, the project that we just created. In this case, it will be Flappy Bird clone. And in here, in order to run the app, we are going to run expo start and uh, let it run. And the, uh, a browser page will appear containing this page, which will allow you to run on Android, run on iOS and everything like that. You can also run in the terminal uh, using some commands, uh, which are uh, displayed in here. Press W for open web, for example. Uh, so uh, you don't even need to worry about this page at the moment. And now uh, we have to figure out how are we going to run this. So if you have an Android device or an iPhone, for example, and you are doing this tutorial on a Mac, then you are able to connect your phone via USB or uh, whatever connector uh, you are using and run it straight there. By clicking A, for example, it will, will try to open up on any connected Android device. Just make sure you have USB debugging enabled. However, if you want to run on an emulator, then uh, the easiest way of doing this is to install Android Studio and install an emulator via there. So I'm going to open up Android Studio in here and go to the AVD manager. In here, go to configure AVD manager, and I'm going to open up this virtual uh, machine in here, let's try and do it. Give it some time, it will take some time to load up. Okay, so after the emulator has finished loading, I'm going to come into the terminal and hit 
hey. So uh, by hitting hey, uh, it will uh, open up um, the, the project on the available Android device. And as you can see, it, in, it is installing the Expo Go app, which is an utility app that comes with Expo and that you need in order to run any Expo app, Expo based app uh, within your device. Okay, and after it, it loaded it up, we have our app in here, which just says open up app.js to start working on your app. And let me uh, fix this up a bit so that we can see easily see everything that's going on with our project. So let's come in here, do it like that. And let's open up the folder of this project. Okay, and after you run it, uh, these will appear. And as you can see, we have our folder tree in here. And if you open up app.js, you see that this message is the same that appears in here because this is the page getting loaded. And let's come into the terminal and open up a new one because we must install a few things uh, at the moment which don't come natively with an Expo project or a React project for that matter. The first one that we'll need is the React game engine which will allow us to have, for example, a game loop, uh, which contains a couple of functions that uh, are really useful in order to, and needed by yet, in order to develop a game. So in order to install it, and all of these links are down below in the description, so don't worry, let's grab that, that npm i um, React Native Game Engine, come in here and paste it. It will take some time to install, so uh, don't worry. Okay, it installed successfully, as you can see. And the next package that we'll need is matter.js. This will be our physics engine for this project. So it has a bunch of features which you can see in here. But most importantly for the, the project at its hand, uh, the features that we really need are both gravity and collision detection between two objects. So let's grab the npm i for this package and install it. Make sure you are in the root folder of your project for this. Okay, and finally, we just have to install one last package, which is expo status bar, which will allow us to hide, completely hide the status bar of this application as games generally don't have that in view. So let's come in here and install it. And there we go. We now have all of the packages needed in order to run this application installed. So uh, for this time, I'm going to exit um, Google Chrome and I can just focus on the project. So I'm going to once again deploy Expo. So Expo starts. Let's give it some time. It will open up the developer tools, but I don't need them. So let's get out of everything within our emulator and press A within the terminal. It will start running, so give it some time. Okay, and there we go. We can get out of the terminal now as we probably won't be using it until the end of the, the video. So yeah, so here we are. This is the main page. And as you can see, these text match. Uh, so if we change this and type subscribe to SimCoder, this will refresh and uh, the text will appear there. So this is the main page and this is where we'll have our game running. So for this, I'm going to uh, remove everything that appears in here as I want to keep it as simple as possible. I'm going to leave the main view as I want this one to uh, be flex one so that we can make sure it will occupy the entire screen okay and uh, for now uh, what we are going to do is to remove these tiles let's leave the project as simple as possible so that uh, no misconceptions occur from this and uh, okay so now we can see that uh, we have a status bar however i said that i don't want to display it because this is a game so for this we can simply uh, set hidden to true. And by doing this, you see that that status bar disappears from here. So yeah, it is exactly what we need. Um, and now let's actually start inputting the game engine that we just installed previously. So for this, we are going to say game engine. 
and make sure it, it gets auto imported from um, React native game engine. Let's close that up. And in here, we are going to add a couple of things. Um, nothing much as we don't have a lot of things written out. So we don't have a lot to input in here, like entities, like the physics engine, things like that. But let's get started with the boilerplate part. So the style for this uh, specific element will be um, display or very at position. Absolute. And let's make sure uh, the top is set to zero, the left is set to zero, the right is set to zero, and that the bottom is set to zero. Okay, uh, just making sure uh, everything stays within the boundaries of the screen and that it occupies the entire screen. So let's just collapse everything, make everything nice and clear. Okay, so uh, what will uh, this game engine take? Well, it will take in uh, the, the systems, which is the physics engine, and it will take in the entities. This is for now. The entities will be uh, basically all of the objects that uh, exist within this project. Okay, so that's really important to get right. In, and that's the actually the first thing that we are going to create. And for this, we are going to add a new folder and we are going to call it entities. Uh, let's just worry about this right now. And later on, we'll worry about the physics of the app. Let's create the index.js. And in here, we are going to create a function which first and foremost will export as default and which we call restart. Uh, and I'm going to call it restart because this function will be responsible for restarting the app if need be. So if you want to completely reset the game, this is the function that will get called. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is create an instance of engine, which we'll, uh, we'll get from Mare. And remember, this is the physics engine that we installed previously. And we'll get the dot create. And in this case, uh, we'll set a flag, which will be called, and let's first add the um, brackets in here, curly brackets, and say enable sleeping, and we'll set this to false. Enable sleeping uh, basically improves uh, some performance of the app. However, it does this at the cost of accuracy, and you can see this at uh, the Matter uh, JS documentation. So I'm going to set it to false. Then we'll get the world, the world being all of the objects that are contained within the engine, which in this case would be engine.worlds. And uh, now we are able to set the gravity of the world. So uh, what uh, in our world it is 9.8, I believe, uh, right around that. But for the case of this world that we're creating, we are set it to what we are going to set it to a bit lower uh, than that. In this case, it will be 0 0.4, I believe, is a good number for this. Okay, and now we are able to start actually returning uh, every object that will be within the world. So these are just the parameters of the world, what we did in here. Now we can actually add um, the objects that will be contained within it. So first things first, when returning, we are going to return the physics of this world. And in this case, it will be engine and world within curly brackets as this uh, is an object. And now uh, when we add a new line, we'll start adding uh, all of the components that come with it. So the first component that we'll have, and let's create it right now. Let's come in here, uh, click on any other file, not like that, like so, and let's call it components and let's move it to the root folder. So in here, we'll have our every component that's inside our application, component being, for example, the bird, 
the obstacles and the floor, which are the three main that we'll have. So first things first, things first we'll create the bird as it is the easiest one to create. And let's collapse that. For this, I'm using um, one um, extension from VS Code, which is called uh, React uh, ES7, whatever extension. Uh, let's see, uh, this one, ES7, React, Redux, GraphQL, whatever. Uh, this allows me to uh, run snippets really fast, like this, so RFC will create a React functional component. Okay, so uh, just so you know why I'm typing that. Okay, so for now, let's uh, decide what this function gets. It will get first the world, because we need to have the instance of the world in order to add this object to it. Then we'll have, for example, the color of the bird, the position, and the size. Uh, so for this project, I'm not going to worry about the images of the bird and anima animation of the bird, for example. I'm just going to draw simple squares so that we can really understand how everything works. Okay, so uh, now uh, I'm going to remove this return as we are not going to use it at the moment. And let's simply define an initial bird. This is the initial bird object that we'll have and it will be a matter.bodies.rectangle as well, uh, this will be based around rectangles. If you had the image of the bird, you can could even use a circle in order to make the collisions more realistic as the, the bird in Flappy Bird is kind of round. But for now, let's just use a rectangle as uh, it is um, pretty simple to do. This is basically the hitbox of the bird component. So keep that in mind as that's the easiest way of thinking about it. Okay, so now uh, we are going to pass along pause.x and we can see what this function takes in from here. So it takes in x, y with height, uh, x, y being the position and with height being the size, obviously. So pause.y and let's get out of there. Now size. Now size dot width and finally size dot height. And I'm sorry about that pop up, it's kind of annoying, um, but yeah. And now we are able to set uh, some parameters, optional parameters to this rectangle. Uh, and I'm going to use just one, which will be the label so that we know um, easily what this body is when we write our physics engine. So let's type in birds. And now we can simply do matter dot worlds dot add. And now we are going to pass along our world variable and we are going to add the initial bird to it. Um, this way uh, we can actually make sure we, we have our initial bird within the word that world that we defined in here. Okay, and now what we are going to do is to return this body, which in this case would be the initial bird then the color and any other parameter that we need, for example, pause. And for uh, the renderer, which we haven't created yet, uh, we'll pass along a, a const variable, which we'll create right now, which will actually handle um, creating everything for us. And it will be called birds. However, uh, we see that we already have this function created in here. Let's change that because we want the const to be called bird and that one to actually render out this component. So let's change how this function is structured a, a bit. So anytime bird is created, this export default will be automatically called. Uh, however, we now want the const bird equal to props equal uh, arrow function, open up curly brackets, and in here let's uh, get all of the information that we got from props. Remember, we are calling this bird, 
which we'll be calling this one and not like that. And the props will uh, contain every information that's in here. So we'll get the party, we'll get uh, the position, the color, everything like that. So uh, we must now deconstruct it and parse it into usable variables. So const with body props.body. And now we get to a point where we must comprehend how some things work. But for now, let's write it and then study it. Dot max dot x. And this will get the maximum value of x within the rectangle, this body. So if you imagine here a, a rectangle, uh, this is a y x graph. And um, the x starts in at zero, obviously, and it uh, increases until the screen width. So if we want to get the max dot x, it will get the maximum value of x within the rectangle body. And the same thing for the mean. So if we want to get the width of the body, what we have to do is sub subtract the max for the mean value of x. And the same thing for the height. And let's do it like so. Uh, but for the height, obviously, instead of x, it will be y. Okay, so now we have our width and our height. What we want to do now is to get the x position and the y position of this body, uh, bird body rectangle. So in this case, it will be const x body equal to props dot body dot position dot x minus with body and we are going to divide this by two uh, so that we get the center of the body in this uh, case um, and uh, for, by doing that it is far easier to control it and we are going to do the same thing for the y body which in this case instead of width will be height and instead of x will be y let's save it and now let's parcel the final thing, which will be the color. Okay, and now we just return, and in here we'll return the component as it should look. So let's do view, and it can be a self-closing tag, which looks always a bit better, and it will just contain a style which will be pretty, pretty simple. It will have just a border around the object uh, with the width of one and the color that's passed along in here. So let's do it and say border width one, border color, color. And now let's do the border style, which uh, in this case, I'll keep it simple and, and say it is solid so that it is a straight line. The position, really important, it will be absolute. Then we say that left, so how far it is from the left as we are using the absolute position, uh, then it will be x body. And how far it is from the top uh, as we are using absolute once again, it will be y body. Then let's set the final two, which is which are the width, so width body, and the height, the height body. And there we go. We have our birds component written out. Now all that's left is going to index.js and add it in here. So let's say birds, two points, and now let's call up birds by uh, importing it, really important to do that. And now we must pass along these parameters right here in order to actually create it. So world is the first one. Then for the color, I'll set it to green. And now for the position, let's do X and something like 50 and the Y will be 200. Let's see how it looks and if we need to change it, then we will. Then we are going to set the height to 40. Let's try it like so. And the width, which must be inside this uh, 
curly brackets will be 40 as well as this is meant to be a square. Let's save it and there we go. Now, in order to actually render out this entity within our game engine, what we need to do is to connect this uh, function to our uh, game engine in here. So it is really, really simple. Uh, in order to do this, we are going to use a special um, argument in here, which is called entities, and we are going to call up entities. And not like this, but like so. Okay, and when we save it, we see that a strange error appears, which appears to be in uh, the bird component. So uh, it says that marriage.js default world add and defined. Okay, and it is here. So uh, this has to be capitalized. I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, because we are calling uh, the world all that's inside matter and we don't want uh, any world that got from here uh, and even if we passed along this world in here it wouldn't reference this one it will try to reference one that's inside matter but it doesn't exist it must be capitalized so let's save it and when we do we see that this rectangle appears in here so great we are drawing something on the screen uh, and it is awesome that uh, we are able to do that. So let's try and change the position, for example, and uh, nothing will change as we must reload the application, um, but you see uh, how this will work. And it changed to uh, a, bit, uh, a bit lower. So yeah, it is working. Now what we want to do is to actually start writing the physics engine and make sure that this uh, false, uh, we using this gravity and that uh, we are able to uh, click on the screen and make it jump just like Flappy Bird does. So for this, uh, we are going to come in here and we are going to close everything up. Let's close this up as it is useless at the moment. And let's add uh, yet another file, which in this case will be called physics.js. Let's move it again to the root folder. I don't want it in there. And let's collapse this. Okay, so now that we have our physics.js in here, what we are going to do is create a function, which will be called physics, and I want it to be capitalized. So this function will receive the entities, which will contain every body that's inside the application and uh, we don't need to import it as it will be passed along as a parameter uh, instead of we using the entities file for this. Okay, and it will have uh, another parameters that will be passed along, uh, namely touches, which will allow us to detect touches within the screen, the time, so that we can correctly predict and uh, update the app according to the position, uh, according to the time of the previous position uh, within uh, that particular body or everyone, doesn't matter. And then this patch. This patch, which uh, for the game engine, it works similar to Redux. And if you don't know, it will allow us to send messages from this file right here to the game engine in here so that we can update the information that's been displayed according to the game status where the user lost the game by hitting an obstacle or the floor and by updating the score of the user. Okay, so let's do it. And uh, let's first of all start up an arrow function and let's reference this physics um, file from our game engine object right here. So in this case, we just have to call it systems and pass along an array which will uh, contain the physics inside. Okay, so uh, my VS Code doesn't want to import this, so let's try and import it ourselves by hand. Physics, like so. So now we are indexing our uh, physics file and we are able to do anything that we want with it. So in this case, uh, we first want to get our engine depending on the entities that we have. So entities.physics, and this won't, one won't be capitalized. So dot engine. And now we get the engine from uh, our entities and we are able to freely use it. 
So the first thing that we are going to learn how to do is to trigger an update of the engine. So uh, imagine this is a tick of the game, uh, and anytime this updates, uh, this function will be called forcing the next updates. So updates, and in this case, it will receive the engine and the time dot delta, which is the difference between the previous time we got the time and this time that uh, we are uh, using the time variable. Let's save it. And now we are going to return these entities updated with the latest information. And we are going to export default physics so that it can actually get indexed. And that's uh, the reason why it was an auto importing. So uh, now if I actually came in here and did physics, it will import. That was because uh, I didn't have the uh, export defaults before. So my bad on that. Let's actually import matter. And when we do this, uh, the app should uh, actually start running and the bird should fall because it is getting affected by gravity right now and it is getting updated as time goes on and we use the app. Uh, but for now, we don't want the app to actually start running right away. So, so I'm going to do one thing, which is to come into our app.js and I'm going to say use state and let's import it into React. Use state. And we are going to set a variable called running. Running uh, will be set to false anytime the, the app is stopped and will be set to, to true anytime the app is actually running. So let's come in here and do um, running as it must be passed along in the running variable, which does exactly that. Just basically st stop the time clock of the, the game anytime we want to or need to for whatever reason, if the user lost or if the user, we want to display a menu, things like that. And we are going to come in here and use effect, which will allow us to run code uh, for the first time that this component runs. And for this, we must import it in here as well, just like we did for the use state. So in this case, we're going to set running as soon as component is ready. And uh, there we go. Uh, it is running as it should. Let's handle the touches so that we can actually make sure the bird stays within the screen if you want to. So let's come into the physics engine and let's try to uh, intercept a touch within the screen. So touches dot filter. And we are going to filter because we want to get only the press type of touch. So type equal, 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 equal to press. dot for each and in here we are going to iterate through each and every single touch that we get from the previous uh, tick so it most likely will be just one touch so nothing to worry about that however we must now understand how we can make the bird move up and let's come in here and set it to false so that it is in view and reload the application. Okay, so anytime we touch in here, we want it to have a velocity to go up. And matter uh, contains a, a function that's really made for this, so it is really simple to do. First, we must get the body matter.body.set velocity and we are going to get the entities dot birds so that we get the bird entity we don't want every obstacle to jump as the bird jumps we just want the bird to jump dot body comma and open curly brackets so now we are going to decide how much it will jump by. 
so uh, it will maintain a velocity of in the x axis with of zero as the bird doesn't move to the right the obstacles will move to the left but the bird stays still it just moves within the y axis and let's add a y velocity of minus eight as we want it to go up so let's save this go into the app dot JS and set running to true. And if you click the screen, we see that it jumps and it bounces and it is actually really fluid. So uh, it is doing exactly what we wanted. So great, this part is done. We can move on to the obstacle part, but before that, let's add a floor as it is easier to do. So for this part, I'm going to actually just grab the bird file and copy the contents as it is pretty much the same uh, for the floor components. Let's come in here and add floor.js. Let's copy and paste the bird contents in here and let's change the name to floor. So uh, there we go. Uh, we now have everything that's needed. However, let's change the label because it won't be bird, it will be floor. And let's set a few other variables that are needed for the specific components. So let's give it some space in here. Let's indent everything. Okay, and in here, we'll first of all set is static to true. The floor won't move. It will stay exactly the same place throughout the, the app running time. So we can leave it as is. In here, we are going to change to floor, as it is not bird anymore, and change the name of initial uh, to uh, initial floor in this case. So let's save it. And for the case of the floor, uh, we are going to do instead of border, we are going to do just a background color to make it pop out. So color, like so. Make sure you add the comma where it must be. And there we go. So uh, now all that's left is for us to go into index.js and actually add it to the uh, this return object, which contains all of the elements within this application, within this world very yet. So let's add it right now. So instead of birds, and let's there's a comma missing in here, it will be floor and it will call up floor let's make sure we import it as we do okay uh, it will be green and it already appears in there and as you can see it is stuck in time so it isn't affected by gravity and that's because we have this um, static set to true otherwise it would fall down just as anything else does and now we want to make sure it is the width of the screen and uh, it contains a certain height, but primarily that it stays on the bottom of the screen. And how can we do this? Well, we'll need to use a special little uh, package for this, which we already have as it is native to uh, React Native, which is called Dimensions. And let's add curly brackets in here and call up Dimensions from React Native. And it will allow us to get the screen and the height of the phone of the device in question. So let's get the window height, which in this case will be dimensions.get. And in this case, it will be window.width. And this was for the height, so yeah, let's change it. Height, and now uh, let's do the same thing, but for the width. And window width and set to width. Okay, so now that we have both these variables, we are able to change uh, the size of the floor. So first things first, let's add the height. So we want the height to be 50, something around that, and the width to be window width. Let's reload the app and see how uh, this looks, but first let's set the X to zero. Let's come in here, reload the app, and there we go. So uh, as we can see, it appears to be half the screen, 
And that's because in order to make sure it goes to the end of the screen, we must change the uh, X position to width divided by two. And when we do this, uh, it will uh, go automatically to uh, the end of the screen. So let's reload it and you'll see as it is, it appears running across the screen from one side to the other. And now uh, what we have to do is to come in here and say window height. Let's save it and once again reload the project. And uh, there we go, we have a floor. And as you can see, uh, the cube or the bird stopped within the floor and we are able to jump once again. So we aren't losing yet when we touch the floor, but we will uh, once we finish uh, the project up when we have our uh, physics engine running. So now what we can do is actually start working on the obstacles. So let's try and do it as it is the hardest part of this video. Let's come in here and say obstacles obstacle.js, better yet. And let's grab the birds or something like that so that we can get the boilerplate code from it. Let's come in here and do obstacle. And you could even use just one file for this as we are just using rectangles. So there aren't many difference between all these three files. However, I wanted to make sure everything was as divided as possible so that you can freely use the project and it is refactored so that you can uh, easily add images or special um, styles to each component as you will. Okay, so now that we have this done, let's first change the name and we already changed this obstacle. And in here it is also obstacle and let's change initial bird for initial obstacle. This component will actually be a bit different. It will receive a label parameter. The label uh, will be passed along to the options, just like we did for the bird, where we uh, just placed label and then hard-coded in the string bird. We are now going to receive that label from our index.js, and you'll see why in a second, as this is really important, and this is something that we can't hard-code. So let's go into the index.js, and actually add these components to it. So let's double up on the bird, for example, and let's say obstacle top one. And it is called obstacle top one because we'll have two different obstacles for each line of pipes that appear. We'll have the top, which will appear up in here, and the bottom, which will appear uh, right in here. And this is needed because we can't just draw one big rectangle because the bird has to have somewhere to pass through. So we must have a pair of obstacles for each obstacle that we want. So let's come in here and say obstacle. Don't forget to import it. And it will receive worlds, then the color. This time let's call it red, but it will receive also the label. Let's see uh, where it is within the, the parameters. It is the second one. Okay, so let's come in here, copy the obstacle one and add it within quotes. Red, there we go. And now we see that uh, two little cubes appear. Uh, this isn't uh, what we wanted because we want this to be an obstacle. So we must actually write some code in order to figure out where we are going to place each obstacle and both the top and the bottom. So uh, for now, let's just take the obstacle one, top one as example, which will be the pipe that will appear sticking out from the top of the screen. And let's figure out how to do this. And for that, we are going to create yet another folder called utils. And uh, this folder will uh, have a file called random.js, which will just contain random functions of this project. This is a file and a folder that I like to create for each and every single project that I do for functions that don't really belong to anywhere specific within the, the project, they just go in here. So let's try and do this. Okay, and now let's come in here and say export const get pipe size 
pos pair because we are not just going to re return the position of the pipe, we are also going to get the size of the pipe. Uh, so it will get everything. Let's do equal to, at this moment, we won't have any variable in here to not make anything confusing. And let's open it up. So let's close this. So first things first, we are going to get the Y top position. And why is this? Well, each pipe, both the top and the bottom, will have a height corresponding to the height of the screen. However, for the top uh, pipe, we are going to define a randomized number that goes from a range, a range from 100 or 200 or whatever, 300, to uh, the height of the screen minus something. And we are going to subtract that for uh, the position of the screen in the zero. So it will be a negative 500, for example. This means that the pipe that is the height of the screen will be pushed up to uh, somewhere. And this will leave, obviously, a white space in the bottom. And in that white, white space, we are going to create the bottom pipe, which will be uh, some amount of pixels below where the top pipe ends, and that way the bird will be able to pass through. Hope this is clear, and if it isn't, it will in a second, so don't worry. So the first thing that we have to do is set the Y pos top, which will be equal to a random number. And for that random, uh, let's do a function for it, as it is specific and we might use it somewhere else within the application. So get random, and uh, we'll say that it is equal to min and max. These are the parameters of this function. And let's add an arrow function at the end. So now we are going to return math.floor. And within the parentheses, it will receive math.random like so, and let's add the brackets up top, times, and between parentheses, max minus min plus one plus min. This might seem confusing, and it is overly confusing. That should be a function dedicated for this type of action. Uh, however, it doesn't exist, so this is the way that we do um, a random between two uh, numbers and uh, these being min and max. Okay, so now we are able to come in here and do get random. And this time it will uh, be a random number between 300 and the width, the height of the window minus a value, let's say 100. And uh, then we can adjust it if uh, depending on the screen and things like that. But for now we need uh, this uh, piece of code right here, not the uh, obstacle, but the dimension, so that we can get the height of the screen. So let's move it, uh, or already at copy and paste it in here, and say window height minus 100. And there we go. Now we have our top position uh, within our screen. And remember, this will be negative. So let's add a minus in here, as uh, it will be uh, pushed up or uh, the top pipe will have a negative y uh, because it has the size of the window. So this is how we are going to go about it. So now we need two pipes. Let's say pipe top, and let's add both the object for the position and the size in here. So first of all, we'll have the position. So pause, x two points, window width so it anytime this pipe is generated it will be generated um, at the end of the screen uh, but we want to add some customization to uh, whatever function calls this function so we want to add a plus add to pause x so add to pause add to pause x 
and by default it will be equal to zero. Uh, but we just want to make sure uh, whatever this function is called, we are able to slightly change and alter how this position uh, acts and set the default to zero so that if we don't want to add anything to the X position, then we can just leave it empty. And by, by doing this, we are able to add to position X. And for the Y, uh, then it will be Y top, or better yet, Y pause top. Okay, so now we have our position set for the pipe top. What we have left to do is to set the size of it. And in this case, it is really, really simple. What we are going to do is set height to window height times two and the width to 75 or something like that. Let's see how this looks. And uh, in here, we must call up size, which is the name of the object that's inside the main object. Okay, and we are able to save it. And let's do now the bottom pipe. So let's call it pipe bottom. And in here, it is slightly different as instead of Y post top, and the X will stay the same, but the Y won't for obvious reasons, it will be window height times two plus 200 minus Y post top. This will make it so that 200 pixels be below the pipe top, this uh, pipe bottom will starting, start to get drawn. So uh, this is just some uh, basic math that has to be done in order to calculate exactly where um, uh, the, pipe, the pipe bottom will be. Uh, as long as the size goes, it is the same. So we don't have to worry about that. Now what we can do is simply return an object containing both the pipe top and the pipe bottom. Okay, save it, and let's go to index.js and actually implement this. So let's come in here and add a const, and it will be called pipe size pause a equal to get pipe size pause pair. And let's um, add the parentheses. Uh, it auto imported it, and now we can simply save it and use this object in here. So let's come into the object top one and let's give it some space from the other objects. And we can are free to delete both the pause and the position as we'll be adding it straight from the pipe size pause A. So in this case, it will be pipe top dot pause comma and let's grab everything that we have in here. So pipe size pause A pipe top dot size. Size, not size. Okay. And when we save it, we see that it gets uh, rendered and uh, it is a bit strange. So uh, let's try and fix this. And one good way in order to actually debug this issue is to come in here and set to minus 300 so that the pipe appears closer to the bird and we can easily see it. So let's reload it. So it is. it has gravity and it shouldn't have uh, or be affected by gravity. So that's something that we have to change. And that's the origin of the error. Let's set aesthetic to true. And when we save it, it appears as it should. Uh, so awesome. And if we reload it, for example, let's come in here and reload it. Give it some time. It will reload with a different height. And one good way of testing this is to go onto the terminal. Get terminal. Let's go to the original terminal that's running this. This one and click R. It will uh, keep on reloading the application so that we can easily see how everything looks. Okay, and you might want to play around with the sizes of the random. And uh, right now I'm not going to mess with them anymore. However, it might be good to uh, do the max and the mean, uh, this 300 and the 100 number, uh, depending on the window height. So uh, for now, I'm going to leave it like this as it is uh, easier and I don't want to overcomplicate this. However, keep that in mind.
Okay, so now that we have our obstacle top one ready, we must do the obstacle bottom one. Let's, for that, grab the pipe size pause A, or better yet, let's uh, double up on the obstacle top one and do obstacle bottom one. Then it will be pipe bottom, copy and paste that. Now let's try and reload the application to see how it turns out. And uh, in here there's an error as it should be bottom one. And let's change the color as well to blue, just make it easier to, to see. And there, is a, there appears to be an error when it comes to the rendering of the bottom pipe. So let's go into random as it should be in here the error. Well, it can't be the random, this is a pretty basic function, it can't be the size of it. So, by exclusion of uh, problems, uh, we reach that probably this calculation here is not correct. So we do window height times 2, which is the height of the top pipe, plus 200, which will be uh, the gap between the pipes, minus y post top. Well, I believe it is this one, as this uh, variable is already negative, uh, then this is probably meant to be uh, positive. So let's add the y post top and let's re-render the application by coming in here and hitting reload. And there we go, we get two pipes, so awesome, that was the issue. Uh, now, uh, because we already have them working and we know that they are working, you can, uh, again, test these easily by creating a terminal, going into your terminal of the running application and hitting R, and it will keep on reloading the project. Okay, but because we know it is working, uh, let's remove the minus 300 so that it renders where it is meant to be. Okay, so now that we have our first set of pipes working, let's handle the animation of them so that they go through the screen and that we are able to try and jump through them. So, where is the physics.file? There we go. And the, this is our physics file. And now let's uh, simply come in here and do matter body dot body capitalize, don't forget, dot translate. And now these will translate the body to uh, the certain place of the screen that we want. In this case, we'll first get the entities that we want. And in this case, it will be the, the, both the obstacle top. And now let's pass along uh, the number. So one, uh, we'll change this later and refactor it uh, for the other object uh, obstacles that we'll have. And uh, it will be dot body, comma, x, two points, minus three, and the y will stay as zero. This will make it so uh, that the body will move uh, three positions or three uh, pixels to the left anytime this function is ran. And as you can see, the pipe starts running. Uh, so awesome, let's do the same thing for the bottom. And if we save it and come in here and reload the application, we'll see what effect this has on the file. And as you can see, uh, the, the bird gets pushed to the left. It is a big mess, but we can change this. Uh, the the um, obstacles are running, so it is good. We have our basic physics engine and animation ready. Let's go into index.js and add the second set of obstacles because we'll have two sets of obstacles always running as whenever the first one is disappearing, we want the second one to show up in the end. And whenever the first one disappears, we want to move it um, to uh, out of the screen, some pixels to the right of the second set of pipes so that uh, it is a continuous loop. And we are only using two sets of obstacles. We don't need to use any more. We don't need to generate any time uh, the obstacles get out of the screen. This way we can keep it really efficient by just using four objects, one obstacle top and bottom for each of the sets. So let's create yet another obstacle for this. 
let's change the name numbers of both of them so obstacle top and obstacle bottom two and now uh, let's add yet another um, pipe size so let's add pipe size pause b and in this case uh, we'll add it but we'll add it in a different location so we'll make use of this uh, add 2x variable and we'll say window width times 0 0.9 it will make it so that whenever the first pipes are almost disappearing, the second pipes are appearing uh, to give that illusion of continuality. So let's grab this pipe size pause B and add it in here. Okay, and as you can see, they already appear in here. However, they are not moving because we must go into the physics.js and add it uh, once again. But in order to avoid writing duplicate codes, we are going to say for, and we are going to have a for loop in here, index one to index smaller or equal to two, because remember, we just have two sets of obstacles, uh, the one and the two index. So that's why it is starting in one, which is not that common in a programming uh, lesson, but that's fine. Let's come in here and add in to the bottom. And we are going to say dollar sign index. And because we are using these backward quotes, we are able to um, add uh, strings within uh, another string like this, which looks uh, really uh, clean. And instead of using plus signs and all of that, simply use this accent to that's backwards. And that way we can add the strings like so. Okay, let's save it. And now if we rerun the app, we'll see that there's an error. And this is because in here, I forgot to remove the one. So let's try and reload it once again. And if we jump, we see that two obstacles appear. Awesome, so we have two obstacles running. And right now, uh, all that's left is to actually handle the collisions and make sure that whenever a pipe gets out of the screen, it is moved to the end of the screen uh, so that it can go through the screen once again with different positions. So let's do that part right now and say if and now let's grab the entity's body and it can be the top. It doesn't matter the top or the bottom. They both have the same X position, so it is the same. And let's say bounds dot max X. So this will get us the maximum amount of X within this rectangle. And if the maximum is smaller or equal to zero, then that means that this obstacle set has gotten out of the screen. And uh, so it is basically useless and we can actually um, move it to the other side of the screen far away so that it doesn't appear yet. So for this, we are going to, first of all, get another set of pipe uh, size and pose pair. So pipe size pose equals to get pipe size post pair and uh, we'll again uh, set it to window width and let's see if I have those variables in here I don't so let's come into random and simply grab the dimensions okay so let's say window width times 0 0.9 Again, to make sure every pipe set appears in a predictable amount of time. And uh, this way uh, it will work just fine like we did when we started up the application. Okay, so now that we have this, we are going to set the position of each of them. And for this, I'm going to actually grab the translate as it is pretty much the same. But inside of translate, it will be set position. And we'll uh, automatically set the position of this obstacle to pipe size pause dot position or better yet dot pipe top first dot pause and we are going to do the same for the bottom pipe like so 
and this way uh, uh, this should re-render uh, to the end of the screen. So let's try and reload this. Let's try and beat the game. Oops, get out of there. And it is a bit funky, so let's try and figure out why uh, the bottom one isn't appearing uh, yet. Oh, and uh, <laughs> it is quite easy to, to see why, because it is setting translate and not the uh, set position. So let's reload it and see if this time it will work as intended. So let's try and not lose. And again, though that pop-up is messing me up. But okay, fine. So uh, the <laughs> the game seems to be working as intended. Now all that's left is to detect collisions because as we can see, we are colliding with those obstacles and nothing is happening. So let's try and do this. So in order to detect collisions between two objects, it is really, really simple. What we have to do is come in here, above return entities and out of this for loop. And let's do matter.events.on. And now we pass along engine and the type of collision, or better yet, the type of event that we want to receive in here. In this case, it will be collision start. And whenever we get the collision start event, we are going to start up a function event, open up arrow functions. And in here, we are going to do uh, dispatch type two points game over. As I've said when we started this physics file, uh, this dispatch function is used to send details or information, uh, messages, whatever, to this object right here so that we can know, for example, when uh, the user has lost the game. So uh, by doing this, uh, we'll be able to receive it in the app.js. Uh, so that's what we are going to write right now. We are going to see receive events in here, and we are going to do this by getting the on event equal to open parentheses e open arrow function. And now we'll do a switch. So switch e dot type. Uh, remember that's the parameter that we sent. And let's try and close uh, so some of these functions uh, files up because they are cluttering a bit. So uh, we get the type in this function in this object. So e dot type will in this case get us game over. So let's copy this string. Let's say case game over. Then we'll set running. to false, and um, in the future, we'll call up game engine and stop it completely so that no ticks are, uh, so that the timer is stopped and the game stops as is. But for that, we must get the reference of this game engine. So let's try and do it right now. Use state and game engine. This will be null from start. And now we'll simply get the ref of it in here. And say that the set game engine is set to ref. Ref being the variable that's uh, passed along in here. OK. And as you can see, um, the game is already stopping. Uh, whenever we uh, the the bird uh, goes to the end, so for example, if I uh, started up the game again, and it is a bit strange, so let's try and reload it. And if I uh, manage to pass through here and I crashed into one of the obstacles, it will stop. So it is already doing a lot of what we wanted, but for now, let's uh, simply use this game engine to come in here and say stop. This will stop completely uh, the game engine. And let's add yet another thing, which is the scoring system. So, points, and this will return to us the or keep track of the current points. So 
I'm actually going to say current points. Current points, and it will be initially set to zero. So whenever we lose, well, unfortunately, the current points will be go going to zero, and um, uh, we are going to do it like so. Okay, and uh, there we go. Now we uh, have everything almost running. Uh, all that's left for us at this moment is to add the uh, current points counter. And for this, uh, we are going to go back into our physics.js and uh, do um, a cool stuff in here. So in this for loop, we are going to detect whenever the obstacle passes our bird. And whenever that happens, simply add a score point to the user. So in order to do this, I'm going to grab this if down here because it is pretty much the same. So if body ma bounds max dot x smaller or equal to, and now uh, I'm going to go into entities and see the position, initial position of uh, the bird within the x axis as whenever the obstacle passes through there in the max, so in this side, then it is a point as it is impossible for the bird to hit the obstacle after that. However, we must keep track of uh, the scoring system as this might be called more than one time. So let's keep a Boolean flag associated with the entity so that we can uh, guarantee that it is only called once and uh, whenever the user crosses this barrier, it is just one point and not more than that. So we are going to say and entities obstacle top index dot Point. And we are going to say if this is false. So uh, exclamation point entities obstacle top dot point. And if uh, this condition is true, uh, this if condition up top, it will enter. And we'll set that the entities obstacle top index dot point is equal to true. And we are going to dispatch a new message, which will be in this time, type two points, new points. And this, by doing this, we are able to receive the new point information within our game engine object. So let's first do break like so, and then case new points. And this one uh, will simply update the current points. So set current points current points plus one. And by doing this, we'll always get the most updated point system possible. Then let's add break, even though we don't have any other case, but it is always good to make it clean. So now uh, let's just end up the video with the UI as uh, it is uh, almost everything is running. And with the UI system, I can guarantee you everything will be running uh, as good as possible. So the first thing that we want is the point system. We want to display the current points of, to the user. So let's add a text, auto import it from React Native. And in this, this time it will sh simply show current points and don't forget to make it in between curly brackets so that we can actually display it and uh, the value of current points instead of the text current points. And now let's add some styling to it. So the first thing that we want to do is to align it to the center. Then we want to make it bigger. Let's say that the font size will be uh, 40, something like that. And when we add it, you can see the zero in here appearing. Then we want the font weight to be bold, to make it stand out a bit. And then the margin, let's say 20, just to make sure it is a bit far away from the top of the screen. Okay, there we go. And now uh, let's uh, add the end screen uh, because right now it started running again because I uh, hit save and when I do control S, it will uh, re-render the application, some parts of it, and that's why it starts up. 
But for now, let's actually do the home screen, which just will just have a start game button. And it is really as simple as that. So first things first, I'm going to move the status bar inside of game engine, save it. And in here, I'm going to uh, do a tertiary operation, which will be if running, question mark, and this should be in the negative. So if not running, better yet, this means that the user has either lost or uh, has just started the, the application because we are going to change this running to false. So whenever the application is started, set running will be false. So in here, if not running, then we are going to create a view else will show nothing. So let's just set it to null. Okay, so in here, let's style out this view. And in this case, it will be flex one so that it occupies the entire screen. Then we'll say justify content to center. And finally, we'll align items to center. Okay, then inside we'll have a touchable opacity which will allow us to get the feel of a button. And inside this touchable opacity, we'll have a text. And we'll style this in a second, so don't worry. And it will be called Start Game. And the button appears in here. So let's start by styling the text or the button. The button. Let's go. So style. And in this case, We'll set the background color, so nothing fancy really, just make sure it stands out a bit. So background color will be black. The padding, horizontal, let's say it is 30. And the padding, vertical, let's say 10. Okay, so now that we have our button, let's style out the text that's inside it. As well, uh, as both of them are black, it is kind of hard to see. In this case, we'll say that the font weight will be bold, the color will be white, and the font size will be 30. Let's save it, and there we go. We have a massive button in here uh, that's clickable, and it looks kind of nice. Okay, so uh, all that's left now is to, uh, in here, in the touchable opacity, remember it acts as a button, to have the on press and actually start the game. So on press, open arrow function, open all that up. Let's come in here and say that set running will be set to true and game engine dot swap swap entities. And these will uh, make sure that the game engine re-renders every single entity. So as easy as that. And I'm going to do one other thing, which is on game over, I'm not going to set the current points to zero. I'm going to do that anytime the game is restarted so that it looks better as whenever you lose, you are able to see how many points you did in the previous run. So let's try and play it. So by doing this, okay, we see that the points get, are getting added are getting added and game over. And the game stops and when we start up again, it starts up again. So, yep, it is working as intended. Uh, again, this is a really bare bones uh, flappy bird, but it is working and this just goes to show you that it is possible to do this type of 2D games or 2D animations and user interactions with your phone with React Native. So obviously this isn't the best performance one, but it works. And I'm sure if you released this back in 2012 or whatever, when Flappy Bird was first introduced, it would be a hit. So there we go. We have a fully functional Flappy Bird clone and uh, it is available in my GitHub page. So make sure you check it out if you want to get the source code. And yeah, if you have any questions, just leave them down below in the comment section and I'll make sure to respond as fast as possible. If you like this video, then please do leave it a like and subscribe so that you don't miss any single video in the future. I hope to see you again tomorrow. Ciao!